Hi everyone! Uh, welcome to another la um, Learn to Draw and Paint for Free live lesson. So today I am going to show you some techniques with charcoal. Uh, we're going to stick with the universal forms because we want to focus on um, still um, practicing using tone, okay, and seeing the highlights and the dark shades of different objects before we start actually observing objects in real life. So let me show you some different tools and equipment that I've got that I'm going to use. So I've got some charcoal pencils, which are really handy. They come in different uh, hardnesses. So I've got a medium and a hard version here. So that just means the charcoal is more compressed, so you get a dark um, effect with it. I have got some sticks of charcoal too. I have also got a smudge stick, and you'll see just how useful this is. You can see mine's all uh, dusty. I use it quite a lot. And um, a kneaded eraser or a putty rubber. So as you can see, it's very flexible. So it's a great tool for charcoal because you can obviously manipulate it and pinch it to get some really sharp edges. So you can get some real detail with um, the kneaded eraser. So it's a great tool. I'll show you how um, I like to use this in a second. So let's start by just doing some universal forms and start shading them in. So a bit similar to graphite to what we were doing before. So um, let's start with a cylinder. Okay, so you've got your ellipse. It will go much darker in a minute when I start applying my charcoal. So I'm just sketching that in. So if you're used to using graphite pencils, then charcoal pencils are brilliant because obviously you can get lots of detail. But I do like using the charcoal sticks. Now I'm using a brown parcel paper. So just like what you can get from like Smith. So just like a... Um, just parcel paper. The reason I like this, you'll see in a minute why it's really great for drawing. But I do like the texture of it as well. But you, you can use your white sketchbook paper. But I'll show you in a minute why using a different coloured paper is really beneficial when you're working with tone for sure. So let's just start by putting the charcoal. So we're going to imagine the light's coming from this side. Okay, so we've always got to think where our light source is. So we're going to start on the opposite side of our cylinder getting a really dark tone in there. So you remember from our graphite lesson, when you are adding tone, you kind of want to follow the contour of your shape. Okay, so you can see my lines are a bit rounded because they're following the contour of the bottom edge of the cylinder. Okay, so we can put a bit on the top too. It's probably not going to be quite as dark on the top because the light is going to be flat, reflect off that flat surface. Okay, so there we go. So let me just show you a couple more things now. So we've got our dark uh, tone on there. Now the smudge stick. So this is obviously great. You can use fingers, but obviously you can get lots of accuracy. There's no getting away from the charcoal being messy. It is a messy medium. But there's lots of different smudge sticks you can get. You can get a much more sharper thinner one so you can really blend in lots of detail if you're doing a portrait and things. So you can see the smudge stick is brilliant because you can just really blend those mid-tones into the highlights. Now you'll start to see why I like to use brown paper because what I've got here now is a mid-tone. Okay, the brown paper is going to act as a mid-tone. A mid so what I've also got now, you can get white charcoal or just use chalk, okay? And then adding the actual highlight will then help you really think about where that light source is coming from. So you can also add the highlight and you can see just how wonderful the tones then become. You can smudge that in. And then you can just keep working into it. We've got to put a bit of highlight on the top here. And again, you can smudge that in. There you go. So you get the idea. Now, also, just like before, you can add some rough background shading just so you hide the contours of your shape so it's like it's actually in in a space keep it quite light okay so you, you get the idea you can play around with it now there's another way you can use charcoal 
and you can also do this with graphite but obviously it's much quicker with charcoal so what I'm going to do is a second technique here to add tone to some uh, universal forms and what you have to do is this time cover your paper with charcoal so as you can see I'm kind of going to do the inverse I'm going to start with my darker tones even though I can apply an even darker tone in a minute I'll show you so when you're working on light paper you can um, create this mid-tone to start with and you can see it's quite a rough texture but you can smooth that out with just some kitchen roll or some tissue as you can see you can kind of just blend that together and get a really nice even tone all over your page and then we can work on top of that so I am going to draw I'll do another cylinder but then we'll do another shape after so I'm just going to draw a rough guide again let's start with a cylinder right then so this time we're going to do the opposite we're going to remove the charcoal so with your kneaded eraser this is a lovely technique now kneaders are, kneaded erasers are brilliant because as you can see you can just press and lift and it will literally take off the charcoal. It will do the same with graphite too. So highly recommend getting a kneaded eraser. So as you can see I'm now getting my highlights into the charcoal this way. If you imagine this is really effective on your white paper because when you actually take them away it will be bright white because obviously your paper will be a real bright highlight. So it's a bit muted for me here because I'm using the brown paper but again I could go over it and add more highlights with my chalk. So with a kneaded eraser you will obviously pick up lots of charcoal and lots of graphite but by just stretching it and kneading it, it will go back to its original colour. Eventually you will need a new one because it will it will um, hold all of the graphite or charcoal in it but you can just stretch it back out and you can put it to a point really great for hair because you can put it to real nice points and then you can lift off real fine streaks. So really good if you're doing a portrait. Um, as you can see a kneaded eraser. It's a great technique so you can do it this way too and now I'm just going to get my stick and just add some real darker tones to this side now. There we go. Again make sure you are making your form with your lines with your shaded lines as you go around. You can get that stick back into there just to turn it. It's a nice technique because now you've got nice shadow in the background too and you can define your shape again by going around the edges. So there you go. So you've got two techniques for adding uh, charcoal to your universal forms. Should we have a go at, let's do a sphere. Let's put a sphere down here. So just a circle, rough circle. Okay, so the light from the same place, because it's part of the same drawing, so I'm going to have my highlights on this side. But very round, when you're doing a, uh, a sphere, you really want to keep all of the work you're doing circular, just to keep that form have a bit of light down there as well but the main highlight will be the center point here and there we go let's get some tone on this side now really curve it round put some in the background just to define the shape on this side too that smudge stick really 
make it go round okay so we can add some you can see just how great you can make these highlights if you are using chalk you can really bring these highlights out with your chalk just curl it round and either use your fingers to gently smudge or your smudge stick if you need it to be more accurate so give yourself some really straight lines with it so there you go so two ways of using charcoal hopefully you found that useful so drawing directly on and then adding your shadow especially if you're on white paper and work that way or covering your paper and then take it in a way, taking it away using a putty eraser so good luck with that keep going with adding tone to different universal forms you've got two more because you've got the cylinder the sphere you've got a cube and you've got a cone so you want to try and get your tones on all of those universal forms so that when we start doing actual observation and still life all of these um, techniques for shading will be on those objects okay everything is made up of universal forms so check out the blog uh, where there's more information on these techniques okay and yeah have fun with it I look forward to seeing what you what you do <laughs> okay bye everyone